Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, I got another bike to show you today. Yeah, take a look at the High Peak Elias. Now, here's an interesting thing about this, uh, this bike's name. If you speak Spanish, you might actually call it Elias. But um, I have a friend whose name is Elias. So we're going to call it the High Peak Elias today. So the High Peak Elias actually looks very similar to another bike that I have. We'll leave that nameless. <laughs> but many of you might recognize uh, something that looks very similar to this. And so when uh, High Peak contacted me about the bike, I was very interested to find out what differences there might be between this bike and say the other bike. Now this is a less expensive bike and that's the reason why I decided to take it just to see if it uh, was worth uh, considering. So let me give you some prices real quickly. We'll get that out of the way. The Elias is also a step over version. It's called the Bona. So uh, it's the same prices for either the step through Elias or the step over Bona. I, I opted for the step through version. So the bike itself is $14.49 normally. Currently it's on sale for $11.49. Or you can get a two battery version of the bike. So it'll give you a second battery. And that normally sells for $18.98, but uh, they have it on sale for $14.49. So uh, it is a, basically a less expensive version of the other bike, but there are some differences in the bike itself, okay? So let's take a quick look at the bike and uh, talk about uh, what it offers. I'll give you a quick overview here. So you can see what it looks like in front and back. It's a striking looking bike. I think the red accents really highlight it. Um, I think it's kind of part of their branding because the word high peak, the word high is in red. But again, that distinctive red stripe in the back really kind of stands it out. So it's available in gray-blue, which is what we have here, or in yellow. I opted for the gray-blue, obviously. It is a 750-watt motor, and it, uh, it is uh, labeled High Peak on there. It's got 65 newton meters of torque. The battery is 48 volts, 15 amp hours. So if you had a second battery and you just strapped it to the rear rack, which is included, by the way, the rear rack is included on this bike. I know the other bike does not include a rear rack. You have to buy that. And uh, of course it has the rear tail light too. Um, and of course a front headlight. Um, the rear rack is included. It will handle up to 60 pounds. There is a front suspension. Okay, so it is a suspension system. 20 by four inch tires. Um, it is a folding bike too, just so that you know. It folds in half right here, just like many other bikes will do. And of course, on the handlebar stem, which is a very tall stem, this folds down as well. I'll show you a photo of the, uh, the folded version of the bike. I think it's actually just easier that way since I'm recording this all by myself, one-handed here. Um, the brakes are 180 millimeter rotors. It is a mechanical disc brake. Okay, so they're 180 millimeter rotors. The brakes are unbranded, so we don't really know who makes the brakes for them. I will say that the brakes are just average. Um, the rear brake doesn't really have a whole lot of power. I rely a lot on the, on the front brake to be able to stop me, but uh, the rear brake just seems to slow me down a little bit, but doesn't really kind of lock out. There's a half twist throttle as well. And as I usually do, I put a thumb uh, throttle attachment on it. This is a 3D printed thumb throttle that I do on all my bikes. The uh, components are from Shimano. So you can see up here, there is a Shimano SIS uh, um, gear shifter. This is very common. A lot, a lot of the bikes have this shifter. I did add some things to it. I added a cell phone mount. I added a uh, external headlight because these flash, the ones that come with most bikes don't. And I, of course, added a, a side view mirror, which I do on all bikes. What's interesting though, it does actually have the bell that I like. <laughs> this is the bell that I put on all my bikes. Yeah, it rings very long. It's only, yeah, it just keeps going. So I'm glad to see it's actually there. They're not expensive bells, but it's, it's nice that they're there. Uh, the display screen, there is a seven levels of pedal assist on here. 
and it is a class 2 bike so it will go from uh, uh, 0 to 20 miles per hour. It is governed to 20. If you try to go past 20 uh, you can definitely feel that it just pulls you back to 20. So it won't let you go past the 20 miles per hour. The saddle is uh, a very basic saddle but there there is a little bit of uh, rubberness to it. <laughs> so it, it does have a little bit of cush but not much. Um, a little bit thinner in, in terms of width. Uh, I prefer a wider saddle, but it, it wasn't so bad actually uh, sitting on it. So, but you may want to you may want to change it out. A lot of people change out their saddles. Down here we have the freewheel is actually uh, Shimano branded, and of course the derailleur is a Shimano uh, tourney as well. So other information: it is recommended for riders from four foot ten to six foot two. The uh, the um, seat post does go quite high and I do have decent extension with it so I'm glad to feel that and um, the total weight of the bike is 61.73 pounds so it is not lightweight even though it is a folding bike but many of the bikes in this category is about 60 something pounds so pretty standard in terms of that and your step over height right over there a step over would be 17.33 inches for the step over. So it's very easy to step over the bike. The battery is easy to remove. It's a, it's a key over here that you put in. Put the key in there and then just pull the battery out. There is an on off switch on the battery itself. So you can power it down and charging is done right through here. You can either leave it on the bike to, to charge it or you can take the battery out. Overall, um, the bike has a very familiar feel to it. As, as I mentioned, it does look a lot like our other bike. Um, but I think the differences are the price is a lot less than the other bike. But uh, you do lose certain things. Uh, you don't have a hydraulic brake system. You only get a mechanical disc brake. So you do need to be aware that you need to stop early on this bike. It's a good looking bike though. I kind of like it. People asked, um, who've seen it already, said, do you plan to keep this bike or are you going to sell it off? Well, let, let me say this. Uh, High Peak was kind enough to give me a secondary battery with it, so I have a double battery. So we can do some distance. I plan to hang on to this bike. It probably will be one of the bikes that I will lend out to friends and, re and neighbors who might want to try a bike. I, I tend to feel that uh, if you're going to start out on a bike to just to try it, 20-inch version bikes usually seem the best to do. Now, the, for full disclosure, I did have a little bit of problem with the bike when I first received it. Um, I rode it around for maybe two miles and the uh, throttle kept kicking in and out and so did the pedal assist. I wasn't sure why and I kept thinking, oh, there's something defective with this bike. But uh, after I stopped and then I, I jiggled around the, the cables a little bit and made sure connections are correct, never had a problem again. So I'm going to say, it was, chances are, it was probably loose connections probably during shipping so I would highly recommend to anybody with bikes whether it's this brand or any other brand check your connectors before you take your bike out in the very first time and while you're at it go ahead and check up all the um, the bolts and everything maybe make sure everything is tight the way it should be that nothing had gotten loose uh, during shipment so yeah it's a nice looking bike it performs well I've ridden it now for I think about 17 miles before this review and um, yeah, I, I think it actually rides very well. It, ri it reminds me very much of the other bike. Pretty much feels and rides the same way as the other bike, but it's a lot less expensive. And, and like I said, you do lose certain components. You don't get the hydraulic brakes. <laughs> but uh, you know, other than that, yeah, it's not bad. The other, the other bike goes around 23 miles per hour. This one goes up to 20 and that's it. All right, I think it's best to take it out for a ride and see how it does. We'll also try it out on our hill test to see if it goes through the hill with no problem too. So uh, considering that it is a lower torque motor, you know it's a 750 watt motor, I don't expect that this will go very, very uh, fast over the top of the hill. Um, most of the bikes that are, are, are um, in lower in torque seem to have a little bit of problem. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how well it does. So stay tuned. All right, we're back out on the road and testing out the the bike. Let's see if this does well. 
Like I said, I've already ridden the bike for about 17 miles to get an overall feel for what the bike is able to do. And like I said, it performs pretty much like the other bike. It really does have a very similar feel to it. Looks like it, of course, too. Fenders are included. I don't think I remember to say that. It does come with fenders. Building the bike is essentially the same as all the other bikes. I think the only thing extra I had to do was I had to mount the, uh, the kickstand. <laughs> Other than having to mount the kickstand, everything else is pretty much the same as everyone else's bike as far as uh, building it is concerned. It's not hard. I've built so many bikes now that um, it comes like second nature to me at this point. It's kind of a foggy day today, but it has a... Uh, it has a nice breeze on, on me, so I'm not hot or sweaty or anything like that. Yeah, throttling it is very easy. Even pedaling it is very easy. It is a cadence sensor on here with seven levels of pedal assist. Right now I'm pedal assist level five. I'm, I'm barely putting any effort in, in pedaling. There's a gear shifter here, of course. It's kind of behind my cell phone mount here. You use your thumb to do it. But you do definitely have some ghost pedaling going on where you don't feel the resistance at all. Kind of wish that some of the manufacturers would consider uh, changing to a, a uh, maybe like an 11 tooth uh, in the rear. Maybe add an eighth gear type of thing or, or even leave it seven, but make the, uh, the lowest um, gears, uh, the highest gear I should say, uh, an 11 tooth instead. Display screen is pretty typical. Um, not the easiest to see in bright sunlight, but I can see it. All right, we're gonna have to cross over here. And uh, we'll see if people stop for us or they don't, and they do. get across over here first all right we are past the intersection <laughs> I think that may have been the fastest ever passed that intersection <laughs> people are already stopping for the lady with the uh, with the dog so yeah pedaling is very easy uh, with the cadence sensor some might pre prefer the torque sensors but I think in a bike like this uh, cadence sensor makes it easy, a little bit easier to ride. People with certain disabilities like myself, I have a weakened leg and a replaced knee, everyone knows that. But uh, for me, the cadence sensors in general will do a better job for me. It's a little bit easier. But uh, I purchased the bikes so that I could uh, keep my knees moving. I really never bought it for exercise, but I can see you can get some exercise on bikes. At times I will throttle and pedal at the same time. I'm or currently right now, just so you know, I'm on the seventh gear. Uh, I am uh, kind of ghost pedaling as I go. I mean, I'm very slowly and casually pedaling, but it is keeping my bike moving for me. Like I mentioned before, if you hit 20 miles an hour, it will uh, stop assisting at that point. And uh, even the throttle will max out at 20. It will not go beyond it. You kind of feel it too. It kind of governs it. So you, uh, you feel it just back off a little bit. When you, once you hit the 20 miles per hour, it'll back off until it drops a little bit in, in power and it'll kick back in again. But no, it's a nice riding bike. Will it do hills easily? I kind of have my doubts, quite frankly. I, I don't think we're gonna see the performance that we see on the really big bikes, obviously, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's kind of like the uh, expectation um, that it will get over the hill, but it will not do it um, extremely fast. Uh, just to give you a, an idea of how we do this hill test, in case you're new to the channel, uh, there's a bridge over here you'll see, and we usually will stop by the bridge and then just throttle all the way up the hill. 
and we'll just take a look at the speedometer to see how far will it go in terms of uh, miles per hour when it hits the apex of the hill. Okay, so we'll just kind of stop over here. All right, and we'll go. So I'm not going to pedal. I'm just going to uh, throttle fully and let it go as much as it can. And we will fully expect it will start slowing down once we get to the hill point. So we're at uh, coming up at about 17.8 miles per hour at this point. So it didn't quite hit the 20 yet. We're already starting to slow down. And we're slowing down. Will we make it over the top? Yes, we will. We're at 6.6 6 .6 miles per hour. So yeah, it took 6.6 .6 miles per hour to get over the hill. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I kind of expected would happen. Um, if it had a stronger motor, yeah, we probably would be able to see a better result from that. Good morning. But yeah, it's uh, pretty much what I expected. But it does go over the hill. That's, that's the key. Um, now, if you were pedaling, you would be doing a lot better than that. But uh, we do the test to make it the toughest it can get, and 6. Point, what did I say? 6.8 <laughs> is the best it can do. We'll head over to the other portion of the forest preserve to finish off our ride. Um, I would say that the overall smoothness of the ride is pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad for a folding bike. My, what attracted me to this bike the most was uh, the fact that it looked like my other uh, bike and uh, it was uh, a lot more a uh, lot more affordable let's let's say that I think uh, based on their sale price and what the other bike is selling for it's about a three hundred dollar difference oh, okay uneven pavement okay they made some fixes here that they haven't finished this is probably why our path was closed up before. They were probably dealing with this. Morning. So yeah, overall, um, a $300 savings, I think is significant. Uh, you do lose the ability of getting a hydraulic brake. The other one has a little stronger motor. Um, but again, if you're riding in areas that don't have huge hills like that, um, I don't think you would notice uh, too much that you're missing that much. So I, I, I will say that um, the main thing uh, is to be aware that your brakes are not the strongest brakes. Okay? It will stop you, but you will have to hit it a little bit earlier than you typically might if you had a hydraulic brake system. The squeeze on this too is a little bit harder. You have to squeeze a little bit harder in order to get the brake to work well. <laughs> so I think they made some concessions. Um, they didn't give you the best components of everything. Um, the Shimano uh, derailleur is the bottom of the Shimano line, <laughs> but it works. Yeah, I mean, really, as long as it's working well and it works, that's really all you really need for the derailleur. And for myself, I find that I don't usually shift a whole lot anyway. It's only if I'm going over a hill and I have to, uh, have to pedal it, I will at that point go to a lower gear. But usually, I leave my gears on 6 or 7, and I don't really touch it much uh, after that. So it does, it's not really a big deal to me what type of um, derailleur they put on here. All right. Pass through here. And we'll wait our turn to cross. Now, even though this is a step through bike, it is a little tight once you hop off because, uh, you know, your seat is in the way, it pushes you forward. And when that happens, uh, at least for me, I'm a big guy, uh, my chest and my stomach comes right up to the edge of the, uh, of the handlebars. Same with the other bike. So very similar. This is just a function of how the bike is built. And again, they try to keep these things fairly small too because it is a folding bike after all. You wanna keep it as small as you can form factor wise so that you can throw it into your SUV or the back of a pickup truck or 
you know, I we've even put the put this inside one of those 55 gallon container uh, boxes and then slid it into the back seat of our SUV. Yeah, we have a Honda CRV uh, SUV and it fit right in there. Yeah, consider getting one of those um, the little uh, uh, storage type boxes, the 55 gallon version, so the big one. Because once you fold this, if you stick it inside there, um, it makes sliding into the vehicle a lot easier. And like I said, if you have to put it into the back seat of an SUV, um, you could slide it and not worry that you know parts of the bike is gonna damage your upholstery. And even sliding it into the back makes it a lot easier too. We got ours at Home Depot. I think it costs something like $45. All right, let's go this way here. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot easier that way. Now, one thing that would have been nice is if they had folding pedals. Many of the uh, folding bikes include folding pedals um, and that will fit into your car a lot easier if you fold it up because the pedals don't stick out then. And also if you put it in that container box, it'll fit in the container box a lot easier. But folding pedals are not expensive. Uh, we ended up buying some uh, for another bike. I think it was less than $20, might, might have even been like 15 or $16. So it's not expensive at all to buy it. I would highly suggest making that change. Um, if High Peak is listening, maybe that's something they can consider offering as well. I know it raises the cost of the bikes and then they have to make up for it, but I think the, the folding pedals is worth it. Now there's folding pedals and then there's folding pedals. I've had some folding pedals in the past that um, they don't unfold that easily, all right? But uh, another brand that I tried unfolded real easy so you got to be careful which brand you buy and, and, and the like and whether it works well for you. If you buy it um, from say Amazon or something, make sure you have an ability to return it. If it doesn't work well for you, then you could try another one. But getting back to the high peak bike, <laughs> um, it's a nice bike, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to get it. I'm, uh, I'm glad that we will have it available for someone to, to use the test ride if they wanted to try out a bike. It's priced well. You know, it's not an expensive bike compared to some other bikes. So I think uh, it, it would be a good addition for somebody to, to add to um, existing bikes that they have. Or if you're a first timer, you want to try a, a bike and don't want to spend a lot of money, here's a good one to consider. Yeah, they don't have a lot of choices of bikes yet. They only have the two models, but uh, yeah, I would say it's a, it's a good bike. Yeah, I would recommend it. We'll go straight and go forward here. So the seat post is high enough. I can get full extension on, on the ride. I am five foot 10. I weigh about 260 pounds. It's not been a problem at all. Um, some bikes, the, uh, the, the seat post doesn't go high enough for me. And as you know, I like a full extension. It's actually better for my knees that I can get a full extension while I pedal. So yeah, this one does it. Anyway, I would give it a high recommendation. Yeah, I would say if, if you're looking for an inexpensive bike that performs well, that folds, it has a second battery option. Yeah, I would consider it. All right, let's see if we can get past this uh, intersection. 
This is the toughest intersection sometimes to go. Yeah, but there's no cars. <laughs> I think we lucked out. So yes, I would give it a, a good recommendation. You have to just realize that you're not getting top of the line of everything. It is uh, components that uh, um, I think you'll find on some of the lesser expensive bikes, but it works. I think, uh, I think if you're looking for this price range, this would be one to consider. Folding helps out a lot too. You can bring your bike along with you. You don't have to buy a rear uh, car rack. To give, well, that was a chipmunk that ran out in front of us. Uh, the car racks typically, give you an idea, are around $399 or higher. Uh, you do need a two inch hitch on the back of your car. Mines cost uh, $375 to install one. So it's an investment to bring your bike along with, with that. It makes it easier, I will say that, to put it on a rear rack, but you know, folding the bike and sticking it inside the vehicle to transport it actually is a lot more convenient. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Dogs are always trying to get me. <laughs> Now we did a uh, ride out to Wisconsin earlier this year, my wife and I, and uh, um, they would not allow bikes inside the, uh, the rooms, so you had to leave it outside, and uh, there was no way I was going to leave it attached to the car on a car rack, so uh, what we ended up doing was we brought two folding bikes, left the folding bikes in our car overnight. That was actually the safest way to do it. Um, we stayed within what the uh, the hotel wanted us to be um, not bring it into the rooms and uh, it kept it safe because it was inside the car instead of outside of the car so there's a lot to be said to have a, a folding bike with you if you even if you have a regular bike that you normally use sometimes the folding bike comes in handy I appreciate it more and more every time I, I, I ride a folding bike uh, flexibility what you can what can you you can do with it and where you can bring it so all right anyways in conclusion yeah good recommendation for me for this bike I think it does a good job um, check the uh, cables make sure all the connectors are, are good I have not had any problems with it uh, after that first uh, time out I, I feel more likely it was uh, cables that had either loosened up during the shipment connections that didn't make good connections something like that but everything else seems to be fine, um, not have a problem at all. Anyways, if you want one of these bikes, I will leave an affiliate link in the description of the videos. Use that link, it does help my channel out. There's also a $50 uh, discount code for you to use, and that'll save you a fifth, another $50 towards the bike. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time.